our great High Priest. To communicate and fellowship with God, we are to approach Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. Here's Gene. Now, I believe that the author of Hebrews here, his primary audience is his fellow Jews who were believers, but they're very, very immature. And we'll see that later as he makes reference to that. But he also could keep in mind people like Nicodemus. And you remember the story of Nicodemus, how he came to Jesus by night, and he said, we know that you're a teacher come from God because nobody could do these miracles unless God is with him. And Jesus turned to Nicodemus, reading the thoughts and intentions of his heart, and said, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. You need to really know Jesus Christ personally. You need to be circumcised in your heart. And so the author of Hebrews is probably thinking in terms of people like that because he was a Jew who knew Christ and he knew many of his fellow Jews throughout the New Testament world. So basically, uh, what he's going to do now is really introduce them in a very specific way to Jesus Christ, who is our great high priest. And so, beginning in verse 14 of chapter 4, he says, Therefore, therefore, in view of the fact that we have the Word of God, we have the Old Testament, we have the revelation of Jesus Christ, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. You see, I think he's talking to his fellow Jews who have put their faith in Christ, even though they're very immature and they don't understand all this. He wants them to really evaluate their confession, hold fast to that confession. And then he explains, he said, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. Now think about that. Tempted in every way as we are and yet without sin. I reflected back on what happened to Jesus when He began His ministry. Remember how He went into the wilderness and He fasted and He prayed and Satan came to Him. And the essence, the essence of that temptation was power. To turn stones into bread. To, uh, to be the ruler of all the kingdoms of the world. Of course, Satan was deceiving him. He had no power to do that because Jesus Christ was the ruler of all kingdoms. Pride, you know, throw yourself off the, the temple and let the angels take care of you. So he was tempted in the area of pride. But it said he was tempted in every way as we're tempted. Think of all the ways in which we are tempted. Just take the whole area of sexual temptation and the variety of sexual temptation. He was tempted in every way as we are, and yet without sin. And that's what makes him the great high priest. Therefore, he says, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. In other words, he's saying, look, you're new believers, or at least you're immature believers, and you need to understand that you can't live the Christian life by yourself, and that's why Jesus Christ has become the great high priest, who is tempted in every way like we are, and yet without sin, and we can go directly to him. And Paul elaborates on this when he wrote to Timothy, the first letter. He said, this is good, and it pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, 
the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, a testimony at the proper time. And there Paul is dealing with the fact that he is there for unbelievers as the great high priest to represent them before God once they confess their sins and receive Jesus Christ. But he's also there for all of us as believers to be able to enter into his presence because he identifies with us in absolutely every way. And that's why it says we should enter the presence of God through our great high priest with boldness, not with arrogance or pride, but with boldness. We don't have to be afraid because we're welcome there, because there we can find mercy and we can find grace to help us in a time of need. And of course, for believers, and I think he's thinking about believing Jews here who are immature, but he says, not only does this mediator intercede for you when you come to Christ in faith, but he gives you empowerment, empowering grace, that mercy and grace that you need. And Paul, of course, ex illustrates that in his own life. Remember when he had that thorn in the flesh, and we don't know what it was, whether it was mental, whether it was emotional, it could have been, or whether it was physical. We're not really sure what that thorn was. But he asked the Lord three times to remove it. And God said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. So the great high priest is there for all of us. And as we continue to study Hebrews, uh, we're going to see that the author expands considerably on our great high priest, why he's there and what he will do for us. Now, let's just think for a moment about application, however, before we move on. In what effective ways can we communicate with people who believe they can pray to God through mediators other than Jesus Christ. And there are people that believe that. Well, first of all, let's understand uh, the concept of confession and prayer as it involves us. And we read about it in James. James wrote, Therefore confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. Now, what James is really saying here is, yes, confession is important, it's therapeutic, but it is not the means for forgiveness. Sadly, there are people who believe they have to confess to um, another person, a priest, or someone with unique power or position that can exonerate them. There's only one person that can forgive us. And it's Jesus Christ is because of His shed blood. So we need to understand there is the element of confession to one another so we can pray for one another. I mean, if we don't know what the other person's real challenge is, then we don't know how to pray specifically. And God wants us to do that. But when it comes to forgiveness of sins, only Jesus Christ the great high priest is the one that can forgive us our sins. Now, in terms of this question, in what effective ways can we communicate with people who believe they can pray to God through mediators other than Jesus Christ? They need clear teaching from the Word of God. And this is exactly what the author of Hebrews is trying to teach these people. Clear teaching from the Word of God. Now, we're fortunate that we have so much more of the Word of God to help us to understand that concept. And they also need models of prayer. And you see, this happened right at the very beginning of the church, where the apostles, who were the primary leaders at that moment, devoted themselves to what? The Word of God and prayer. And people saw that. And by the way, that was a whole new experience for Jewish believers. 
They did not understand prayer. That's why the apostles said, teach us to pray, Lord. Having an intimate relationship with God was something they just didn't understand because they had to go through the priests. But Jesus came and the apostles understood that they could enter the very presence of God. And they modeled that. But we also see it modeled by Christians because it says, after they believed, they continued in the apostles' teaching and devoted themselves to breaking of bread and prayer. And that was a whole new experience throughout Jerusalem for Jewish unbelievers to look in on these groups of believers throughout Jerusalem who were devoting themselves to prayer, entering into the very presence of God through their high priest, Jesus Christ. So let's review that principle. To communicate in fellowship with God, we're to approach Him through His Son, Jesus Christ.